Good morning. Welcome to St. George's. We have actually quite a few announcements to go through before we begin our worship today. Um, first of all, we uh, express our congratulations to Sheila and Fred Hannum, who are celebrating their 52nd wedding anniversary this week. Congratulations to them. And we have some birthdays this week. Sheldon Pettit, Bill Hall, Tiffany McKay, and yours truly all have birthdays this week. You can sing. <laughs> Today at the Cathedral at 4 p.m. is the celebration of the Order of Niagara. I'm so pleased that Mary Jo Schmidt and Marilyn Pettit have been recognized with the Order of Niagara from St. George's this year. Now they're both at the back of the church. I'll just uh, tell you that they're in that area. I'm going to get them both to stand up, but I know you're all going to have to turn around and, and look. I hope that some of you will be able to join them at the cathedral this afternoon, and I ask for all of your prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude for their incredible ministry here at St. George's. Next weekend, our anniversary preaching series continues with Andrew Asbel in the morning and Bishop Ralph Spence in the afternoon. Andrew Asbel grew up at St. George's. His father is Bishop Walter Asbel, his mother is Mavis Asbel, and uh, he is now the Dean of the Diocese of Toronto. We're really excited to welcome him in the morning. And uh, Ralph Spence was retired Bishop of Niagara. We're really excited to have him preach at 4 p.m. at our Evensong service. Today, our uh, we begin the first part of our joyful giving campaign with the publishing of the narrative budget for 2018. So you will see this document at the back. It's very colorful, it's very beautiful. There's a lot to celebrate in it. Um, our relay begins next week and uh, we encourage everybody to read the narrative budget to prepare for our joyful giving campaign. And uh, that narrative budget is available online as of tomorrow. It is available through your Joyful Giving um, relay packages. And if you want your very own copy, you can pick it up at the back of the church today or in weeks to come. Okay, Kelly is going to say a word about our upcoming gala event. Good morning. Uh, so it was about one year ago today that I stood here and kind of outlined what this past year of celebration would look like for us. And here I am, it seems like no time has passed, and we're promoting our final event of our 225th anniversary year, which is our silent auction and gala, coming up on Saturday, November 25th. I have had lots of folks ask how they can help and how they can be a part of that day. And our biggest area of um, request for you right now would be those silent auction items. So we're asking you to think about businesses that you frequent, your hairdresser, massage therapist, restaurant, things like that. Also, um, businesses that you or your families are involved in. So if you are a lawyer, perhaps you'd consider uh, donating, drawing up of a will, or an accountant, maybe you'd do somebody's taxes, that would be a great uh, prize to bid on. Um, but also thinking outside of the box. So if you have a particular talent like music, maybe you'd consider donating some music lessons or painting or um, floral arrangement. Somebody would love a Christmas centerpiece, I'm sure. So um, please see me today at coffee hour. Next week I'll be at 8 o'clock coffee hour as well as Soup Sunday. I also will have extra copies of the flyers and donation letters if you need that for the businesses as well. And uh, let's end this year on a great note. So there's still some tickets available at the office or for myself as well. Okay, and Briar would like to say a word about yoga. Thank you, 
Martha. I am Briar Colburn and I'll be teaching the chair yoga and introduction to Hatha yoga beginning tomorrow in the Bear's Den. Uh, for those of you that are interested in coming, we will be entering from the parking lot area, from the uh, fenced in playground area, directly into the Bear's Den at the back. Yoga for chair yoga in particular is very useful for people um, who want to assist to improve their balance, to recover from surgery, to prepare for surgery. It's a very uh, gentle and very um, adaptable kind of practice. Uh, a lot of people here are familiar with it, have taken classes with me before. The evening class is an introduction to Hatha Yoga and it is on the mat. So if these appeal to you, please see me after uh, church today. Thank you. Elvis is in the building and has a word to share with you this morning. bit of a mistake it's not for the organ that the dinner is the oh, but, but this is for our refugee family right. that we're raising yeah. money for and I just went, kind of made an executive decision this morning and uh, I think the children and young people are going to be free it says on the ticket that they're ten dollars but um, I think they should be free because it's a family show and you can bring your children and uh, we have tickets available I have tickets this morning, and I think we have lots in the office. So please come out and support us. And thank you very much for Roy. He was in London ye yesterday and all weekend in competition. I don't know what time he got home, but he was at my door at 8 o'clock this morning. So <laughs> anyway, uh, please support us. Thank you. Now I hope that all of these announcements have given you the little hint that you need to join us for coffee hour afterwards so that you can talk to Briar about yoga and you can get your Elvis tickets and you can indicate uh, silent auction items and you can get your gala tickets. We do have coffee hour following the service. It's down the hall in the Bears Den and if you don't know how to get there then we'll make sure that somebody shows you the way. Uh, Tanya wants to say a word. Good morning, everybody. I just, uh, Linda and I were discussing that we have Appreciation, Appreciation Sunday ever so often. And there's a team here at St. George's that gets kind of left out because they're the ones usually organizing this appreciation. So we have organized today an appreciation for our clergy team here at St. George's. So if I could have those available to come up or if not stand up for me, um, Reverend Canon Martha Tatarnik, Reverend, Reverend Scott McLeod, Reverend Canon Dr. Michael Monlock, uh, Right Reverend Walter Asbel, Archdeacon Marion Vincent, who I believe is away, 
and Reverend Canon Paul Brillinger and Reverend Dr. Doreen McFarland. If you could stand if you're here. So it looks like we have about half. So <laughs> um, what I would have been doing with my Sunday school class is we've been talking in September about our clergy team. What do they do here at St. George's? How do they affect our daily lives? And it was actually quite amazing to see the smiles on their faces. At first they were like, what does clergy mean? <laughs> but as soon as I told them what clergy meant, right away I started to hear stories. Martha this, Scott that, Doreen this, you know, just the welcoming of it all. So over the period of talking, some of the few answers that I got were, they give us communion, they baptize us, they help our families, they teach us about the Bible, they help to connect us to God, and they pray for us. I thought those were excellent answers, and of course there's definitely much more that they do for us on a daily basis. <clears throat> they, these are just a few of the many blessings. We are so very lucky to have such a wonderful cler clergy team here to support us and our community. I'm sure all of us he in here today can think of a particular moment, or many moments, or even every Sunday, ways in which we have been comforted, supported, enriched, educated, enlightened and loved by any or all of our clergy team here at St. George's. Especially at this season of gratitude, thank you for teaching, guiding, inspiring, and uplifting us. And most of all, thank you for bringing us closer to Christ. You are all a wonderful example of God's love at work. Your faithful ministry to the people of God is inspiring, and may you all be blessed with health, love, and happiness all of the days of your lives. Thank you all, and God bless you. Can we please stand up and applause our thanks to this amazing clergy team here at St. George's? And as I'm sure you're all not surprised by my next note, we have a cake. <laughs> So this cake is actually a double celebratory cake. Um, it is, first of all, thanking our wonderful clergy team, but it's also expressing a very happy birthday to Martha here, for her birthday is on the 19th. So please join us for a yummy chocolate cake. And also, too, just quickly, our Sunday school has made a book here um, with lots of pictures of their clergy and what they're doing and how they're very important. So I will have this at coffee hour. Please feel free to take a look. Thank you. Thank you so much to Tanya and Linda and the Sunday School for all of your plotting behind our backs. That's so nice. What a lovely surprise. As we prepare our hearts for worship today, we do have an anthem from some members of our George Express and Sunday School. The children will be singing the first verse by themselves, uh, but we invite you to join in and sing with this song that you may recognize from an old Coke commercial. like to build a world a home on a desert with love apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle love i like to teach the world to sing
I'm going to invite you now to stand for our opening hymn. Again, the uh, children from our Sunday School in George Express are going to be singing the first verse of this hymn solo, and you all get to join in for the second verse we are dancing in the light of God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all, all hearts, hearts are, are open, open, all desires known, and, and from, from you, you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse, cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord of the feast, you, you have prepared, prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. 
through Jesus Christ, Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated and let us be attentive to the Word of God. A reading from the book A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him, Aaron said to them. Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered brunt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants. How you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Our gradual hymn this morning is going to be sung by the George Express. Sing a new song. Okay, I was, uh, I was wrong. We are all singing it. And it is number 312.
dream from your sleep, the Savior now has come. He has turned your sorrows to joy and filled your heart with song. Sing a new song. Sing of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of Christ. pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Now I need uh, some help reviewing today's parable. So I need somebody who's willing to be the king and I need somebody who's willing to be a messenger. You can be a messenger, and you're going to be the king? Gordon? Okay, come on up. Uh-oh, where did the crown go? Oh, there it is. Okay, Gordon, go grab the crown. Oh, you're going to find out what the messenger does. You stand right here, Imogen. Gordon, you can wear this. I think it looks rather royal. All right, come on over here and put that crown on. Do you think you can get it to stay on your head? Nope, you're, you're the messenger. And I think that you're dressed properly for being a messenger. It looks just perfect. Oh, that crown doesn't stay on. Okay, so our king here, King Gordon, is going to throw a great big... 
Now, Gordon, we need to look around the church and see who looks like the most special people in the church, the most important people. I don't know. I think those people over in that area of the church look pretty special. My parents? Your parents. Okay. Well, you know what? We can say that your parents are the most special people in the whole kingdom. I want you to go back there, Imogen, and say, you are invited to the king's banquet. Can you go back there and do that? And guess what Imogen's parents say? They're the most important people in the whole kingdom. Do you know what they say to that invitation? They say, we are too busy. We've got other things to do. So Imogen, King Gordon's going to send you out to the people that he thinks are the next important in the kingdom. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's invite everybody who's in the second row over here. They look really important. You're invited to the king's banquet, but what do you think those second most important people in the kingdom say? Yeah, they, they actually say, no, we're too busy as well. So, King Gordon, what are we going to do? How are you going to have this great big party if nobody's oh, going to come to the banquet? Yeah. You know what? I have another idea. What if we just invite everybody? Do you think that you have a loud enough voice to invite everybody? Oh, I, I bet you will. Everybody, you are, you are invited to the King's Banquet. That is awesome. Thank you to our messenger Imogen, but now you have to put that microphone back. Okay, so that got a better response. I think some of these people here might have time to come to the King's Banquet. So we have the great big party. The King Gordon has this great big party. And then something kind of funny happens at the end of our parable. King Gordon sees somebody, and he doesn't like the way that person is dressed. Do you know who that person is? Reverend Scott. <laughs> Gordon just doesn't like the color green, I guess. Anyway, so we need two guards. Will two people come up here and be guards? Okay, how about uh, Simon and, uh, and Nate, Joey? Joey, Simon and Joey, come on up. Joey's my brother. Joey's your brother, okay. Well, I guess guards and messengers can be brother and sister. You guys need to seize Reverend Scott and take him to the outer darkness, which I'm going to say is way over there in the other transept. Okay, so sorry, shouldn't have worn green, bad color. All right, guards, seize Reverend Scott, take him out. Take him to the, to as far away over there as you can get. You want to be a guard too? Okay. Oh, and... Uh, King Gordon is going as well. <laughs> now, when we look at Jesus' parables, we find that some of the parts of the parable are going to tell us something really important about how God works through ordinary life. So Jesus liked to use ordinary examples like a party that everybody would understand in order to help people to understand something about God. But the other thing that parables can do he is... He's arrested. Yeah, he's arrested over there. The other thing that parables can do is that they can tell us something about how God is different. How God is different from how ordinary, everyday life functions. So, let's Start. Let's go through this parable. Let's see what it tells us about God and what it doesn't tell us about God. Can you stop banging on that drum so we can go through this parable? Okay, now do you think that God looks at some people and says, I don't like what you're wearing and throws you into outer darkness? Does that sound like something that God would do? What do you guys all think? Let's get the Sunday school to take a vote. Do you think yes, God would do that? No. Do you think no, God would not do that? Oh, 
job, right? So I think our guards need to bring Reverend Scott back from the outer darkness, because that's not the way that God functions. What about how this parable started? It started with King Gordon looking around and deciding who was most important to invite to the party. Do you think that that's what God does? Does God look around and choose certain people to be really special and then leaves everybody else out? Let's take another vote. Do you think, yes, that's the way God operates? Do you think, no, that's not the way God operates? Oh yeah, everybody can vote, not just the Sunday school. Just a hint, you should all have your hands up. Okay, yeah, so, so that's not exactly how God operates, but you know what? I think that the idea of a party does tell us something really important about God. So when I look around this church, I look at all of the beautiful and wonderful things in which we share together in God's church. No, no, we're moving on now. Going on to the next part about the party. So this is, this is God's party. When we're gathered together in worship, when we're gathered together in this beautiful church, this is God's party. And who do you think is invited to God's party? Jesus, yeah. Out of Imogen, out of all of these people here today, who do you think is invited? Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Everyone. <laughs> Let me ask you something else. Every single person else. in this church. Let me ask you something else. Do you think that it's only the people who are here today that are invited to God's party? No. Everybody in the world. Everybody in the world. Yeah, every so single person so on the world. So everybody Woo! is invited. Everybody in the whole world is invited. And, and maybe, maybe we can all kind of be messengers in going out and sharing that message. Yep. Now here's something else that I think is really true about this parable, which is that sometimes Can we Lily say no messenger? to God. Sometimes we say no to God because we're just too wrapped up in our own lives. We're too busy. So that's another really important part of the parable. Okay, can I get everybody to go and sit back down? Because there's, an, there's another piece that we're going to talk about. Imogen, can you go sit back down? Nope, nope, he's back from the outer darkness. He's not going back into the outer darkness. Can you go and sit beside Mari? Now, coming up this coming week, we are beginning our Joyful Giving campaign. That's when we talk about stewardship in the church. And stewardship is our talk about gifts. It's when we talk about the gifts that have been used to build this church, to build this party that we all share in. And it's when we talk about the gifts that we're going to continue to need as we continue to offer this party, as we continue to build this church. That's what we talk about when we talk about stewardship. We talk about gifts. Now, if we think about this parable, then there are some really important things that we need to know about those gifts. Whose party is it? Can you remind me whose party it is? It's God's party, and who's invited? Everyone. Everyone. That's right, okay. So that is the starting thing that we need to know when we're talking about gifts. We need to know that the gifts belong to God and they are for everybody. The party is God's party and it is for everybody. We have the mystery box. I'm wondering whether Theo and maybe Yuri, would you help Theo go and get the mystery box and bring it up here.
And what I did is I put some gifts in the mystery box that represent some of the gifts, some of the elements that we have here in God's party at St. George's. Now, actually, I could continue to use your help, Theo and Yuri. Let's go through these gifts one at a time and see whether we understand how this parable works. Okay, pull out the first thing. It's Tim Horton's cup. It's Tim Horton's cup. So I used this to represent all of the feeding programs that we have at St. George's. We feed people breakfast every day of the year. We have the community dinner. There's a meal that takes place through the winter time on Wednesday nights for out of the cold. This is part of God's party here at St. George's. What, who makes that possible? Who makes breakfast and community dinner possible? Yeah, everybody? Cecilia? Everybody, well, it's first of all God. So that's what we learn in the parable. First of all, it is God's party. And then, yeah, all of us work together in order to offer that party to who? Who are these feeding programs for? They're for everybody. Anybody is welcome. Okay, let's take out the next thing. Okay, Yuri, can you take that mug up there and put it in front of the altar? so that we can remember one of the gifts of St. George's. All right, then I put this in here. What do you think that this represents? Uh, hymn book, a hymn book. Oh, pr praying? Praying, praying how? Come on, some music, music. We need music at a party, don't we? Okay, and so again, whose music is it? It's God's music. And who is that music for? It is for everyone. I feel like you're getting the hang of this. Okay, let's see what else is in there. A pumpkin. Why do you think I put a pumpkin in there? What does a pumpkin... No, you cannot keep the pumpkin. What do you think the pumpkin represents? Yeah, Simon. Food? Is that what you said? Yeah. So food and thanksgiving, it represents the harvest. We celebrate the harvest every year, whether we're farmers who actually grow the food or not. We all celebrate the harvest. We all celebrate that thanksgiving because we recognize who makes the, the harvest possible, who gives us all of our food and all of our gifts. Who does it? And who is it for? It's for everyone. Okay, can we put the pumpkin up beside the coffee? Oh, and we should put the hymn book up beside the coffee mug as well. Okay. A pillow. A pillow. Oops. Well, I thought that a pillow was better than uh, putting a whole bed in there. But again, through the winter months, once a week, once a week, Anybody who needs a place to sleep can come and sleep at St. George's. And who makes that possible? God. And as Sheila said, all of us working together as well, that's what makes it possible. And who is it for? Everyone. Anybody who needs it. Okay, can we put that pillow up there, Yuri? Finally. Oh, it's today's worship bulletin. I think that our worship is maybe one of the clearest signs of being gathered together for God's party. Who makes it possible for us to be gathered together? God! Whose party is it? God! And who is it for? Well, A1! Awesome. Okay, let's put the mystery box and the bulletin mm -hmm, up mm -hmm. there on the altar. As we begin our Joyful Giving campaign, those are the two things, if you remember anything about Joyful Giving, those are the two most important things to remember. That everything that we are talking about, all of the gifts of our lives, and all of the gifts, you can, yes, all of the gifts that we receive here at St. George's belong to who? 
Uh, who do they belong to? God. It's God's party. It's God's church, and it's God's gifts. And number two, who are they for? They are for everyone. Amen. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. If you're able, please stand. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator, Creator of heaven and earth. I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. He was, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with a time of prayer for our church and for our world. We pray for the church, the world and all of God's creation. You may respond to the words, hear us, O Lord, with the words, your mercy is great. You rejoice in creation, provide help and relief for places battered by hurricanes or earthquakes. Provide shelter for creatures of every kind. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You rejoice in your church. May everyone know that they are welcome and may use your gifts always to do your will. Hear us, O God. You rejoice in the people and places of the world. We pray for nations who are at war, for leaders distracted by fear, for refugees unwelcome in their homelands. Hear us, O God. You rejoice and care for us. We pray for those who cannot worship with us today, those who are homebound, hospitalized, imprisoned or working. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, especially Sarah, Sheila, Charlene, Randy, Abby, Jean, Judy, Gino, Dorothy, Olivia, Larry, Kathy, James, Drew, Susie, Cheryl, Marilyn, Anne, Bonnie, Paul, and Bernice. And we pray for those who have died, especially Richard Trinor, who died this past week. Bless his family in this time of loss. The flowers on the main altar are given unto the glory of God and in lovely memory of Dwight. Tyler and Edward Ruddle and Charles Vaughn, given by Ellie and Wade Ruddle. Hear us, O oh God. You rejoice in St. George's. We pray for our joyful giving campaign, for the ongoing generosity and joy in this community that has made this church possible for 225 years. Hear us, O oh God. And to your hands we command all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of spirit. Amen. Amen.
Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you are able, would you please stand? My sisters and brothers in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you. Please share a sign of that peace with each other. Offertory hymn is found printed in the leaflet, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
God of constant love, in this Eucharist you renew the covenant made once with us in baptism. As you are faithful in all things, may we in our offering be faithful to our calling. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite the Sunday School kids to come up and be our candle guild. And so as a sign and symbol, just as the bread and wine are a sign and symbol, we're invited to lift up the candles as the elements are lifted up and as I lift up my hands in prayer. Give thanks to the Lord our God. Source of the seed, the growth and the harvest, changer of seasons, creator of all, to you we give our thanks and praise. For lettuce, potatoes, tomatoes and corn, for strawberries, cherries, peaches and grapes, for rain after drought, sunshine after clouds, for all and everything, we sing our thanks and praise. How can we ever thank you enough for Jesus Christ, your love personified, who on the worst night of his life gave thanks for the bread and body he could give, saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Similarly, he took the cup of wine and once again he gave thanks to you and gave the cup to them, saying, This is my blood shed for you. When you drink it, you remember me. Praying for the Holy Spirit's blessing on these gifts, that they may yield a bumper crop of faith, hope, and love in our hearts. We pray that in our best days and worst nights, we will always have grateful hearts, trusting you to turn our feeble thanks to worthy songs of praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught us, singing.
Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. This is the table at which God is host and all are welcome guests. These are the gifts of God for the whole people of God. And speak of God. members of our Sunday school, not just the ones who are up here, but all of the members of our Sunday school are invited to receive communion at the side altar and uh, then to go for some games with Tanya after receiving.
table, would you please stand? Faithful God, in baptism and Eucharist, we are made one with you. May we who have shared in holy things always bear witness to your covenant. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose, whose power, power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory, Glory to God from generation to generation, to generation in, in the, the church and, and in Christ Jesus, Jesus forever and ever. And ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Our closing hymn is number 381, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.